they're kept on these farms. They're like death camps, really. You can't, you just can't bear thinking about it. It's awful. And then throwing juice into the wall. In yeah. a massive Wait. hole in the wall with blood oh, all it. It just makes me so angry that someone could have done this to him. These birds shoved into spaces that are too small with no natural light. They're just effectively a living machine. That doesn't sit comfortably with me. What's his, what's his name? Juice. Oh. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, 11-month-old Juice has been rushed in by his distraught owners after a shocking screwdriver attack by callous burglars. I just don't understand how something like this could happen to him. Like, he didn't deserve this. He probably just went up to them and jumped up and started licking them. He's so innocent. Oh. OK, so we're just going to lift him onto the table, OK? Dr Laura Musgrove is the first emergency vet on the scene. Two, three. Good boy. Good boy. As I get up close, he's got lacerations all over his face, and it looks like he's been stabbed in the eye. There's blood everywhere, there's blood on the inside of his collar. He looks awful, the owners are really upset, and honestly, I can't really see a lot to do with the eye because he's squinting, but it doesn't look good at a first glance. Come on, darling. It's all right. Poor little man. Distressed owners Meg and Todd are horrified at the sickening attack on their beloved Staffy. We think they've personally thrown juice. Juice has followed them into the house and he's startled them. And they've thrown juice into the wall. In yeah, a massive hole in the wall with blood oh, all through it still. Sweetie pie. It seems like they've hit his head against a door frame and there's blood all over the door frame. So it's just. I uh, can't even comprehend. Oh, it's sore, isn't it? Hey. It's all right, sweetie. This left eye looks like totally perforated. Um, and he's got some other wounds as well on his face. Oh, I know, I know. We'll need to get a bit more pain relief on board and do a better look there. Mm. I'm just going to take this off. This is quite tight isn't it? Well done. Here we go. Good boy. I'm just going to try and have a better look at the eye using the ophthalmoscope because I really just want to see if things are intact or what the extent of the damage is. But it's a real mess in there. Oh, sweetie pie. It's sore, isn't it? Hey. His eye looks terrible. Poor little man. It just makes me so angry that someone could have done this to him. Can we hold your eye open a bit? Good lad. It's really difficult to see a lot with Juice's eye at the minute. Um, there's a lot of bleeding. We can't even see his pupil. I think his cornea is possibly ruptured, and I'm not even sure he can see out of that eye at this stage. So it's looking pretty bad. All right, darling. This next bit's not going to be too nice, though, is it? Good boy. Can we hold your eye open a bit? Good lad. Looking at Juice's eye, it's actually really difficult to know how much damage there is. There's so much swelling, and he's holding it close because of the pain. I want to make him comfortable, flush out any debris and blood clots in there, and assess his other wounds. Should we just give a little clean of your face? Mm. Good boy. Yeah, it looks much better now, doesn't it? <laughs> I think we might leave it at that for that eye now. It's not the nicest thing, is it, buddy? Mm. All right. A bit more. With juice stabilised and given pain relief, Laura now has the difficult task of talking to heartbroken owners Meg and Todd. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, good. OK, I'm Laura. I know we briefly met a little while ago yeah. and things were a little bit stressful. Um, OK, so first of all, I just want you to know he's OK. All right, so we've got him stabilised. I mean, I think he's very sore and probably in a little bit of shock from what's happened, OK? You know, if it is a screwdriver that's gone in, at this stage, we don't know how much damage it's done. We need to let things settle a little bit, but I guess the worst case thing is that he could end up losing that eye. OK, so what we'll do as a next step is we'll get our ophthalmologist to come and have a look at it and just see, you know, whether we can save it. OK? Thank you. It's all right. I'm not sure Meg and Todd 
are being able to grasp exactly what I'm saying. I think they're still in shock from everything that's happened and I'm not sure they understand that Juice could potentially lose his sight and worst case scenario, he could lose that eye. Hey, Juice. Juice, look who's here. There you go. Juicy. Juicy. Take care, buddy. I hate seeing him. It's like, just... He's so never, helpless. Ever, ever cried like yeah, that. he's never made that noise before. So I just hope he settles a little bit. I feel really sorry for Meg and Todd. They've had a day from hell. Not only have they had their house robbed, they've now got to leave their beautiful boy here in hospital. I just really hope we can save that eye. Okay, guys. All, all good? Right, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, honestly, our pleasure. Come on. Oh. At SASH, emergency vet Dr Laura Musgrove has called in ophthalmologist Dr Alison Groth to look at Juice's horrific eye injury. Hey, can we have a little look? Good boy. Is that a bit better? He's been stabbed in his eye with a screwdriver and other places on his face, but this eye really worries me because I'm not really sure whether whether he can see anything out of there, so... Wow. I'm hoping we can find out a little bit more and potentially save the eye, but, I mean, have you ever seen anything like that I've before? I've never seen anything like awful. this before. It's, it's awful, isn't it, darling? It's horrible. It fits a pretty major injury for juice. The eye has been ruptured, some of the tissue from inside of the eye is coming out, and the eye does not respond to light at all. When I move my hand towards his face, he doesn't show any normal reflexes, which is why I'm worried that there is injury deeper within the eye. So, it's, I mean, it's not looking very good. Um, he, he's, he doesn't re seem to have any vision in that eye. All right, well, we'll ultrasound to see whether there's any damage further within, and okay. I'll let you know how we go. Okay, mister. Good luck. Good boy. <laughs> Well, fortunately, I think Alison has the same fears as me, that there's a lot of swelling there. At the minute, we don't think he can see out of that eye, and so I think she's probably as worried as I am that he might end up losing that eye. It's a very collapsed eye, so it's very difficult to um, see what I'm doing. Poor guy. So this here is the retina. The retina should be lying right against the back of the globe, but it's become separated. And when the retina is not in its normal position, it doesn't work properly. And if the retina doesn't work, then there's not going to be any vision. It's really, really sad. Yeah, it doesn't look good. So the ultrasound confirmed the injury was really severe. Um, and the best thing for Juice is going to be to remove the eye. Ah, oh, poor puppy. Certainly no chance of saving this eye. The decision was made quite easy for us by the fact that he wasn't going to have a chance to see. So the first thing we do is remove all of the attachments and then manage any bleeding. It's generally a surgery that has a very low risk of complications, but all of the tissue is very inflamed and very swollen. And this is going to take a while because it actually is a bit more difficult than usual. With the surgery underway, it's a harrowing wait for Juice's distressed young owners, Todd and Meg. I just feel so bad that he's going to lose his eye only being 11 months old and the rest of his life not having an eye is just so sad. But he's, uh, he's pretty strong and happy, so... He's a happy, playful little dog. He'll still be strong anyway. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be OK, but yeah, I guess we're just in shock. There's a lot of bruising in here. Alison is also shocked to discover Juice's wound has penetrated far deeper than first thought. The injury does appear to extend all the way through the eye and actually involves the back part of the eye as well. It wouldn't have taken too much more force for there to have been fracture of the skull and even injury to the brain. It's now time for the critical part of Juice's surgery. This is it. Poor little eyeball. Just rinsing it out with some saline to make sure it's nice and clean and reduce the likelihood of infection. 
The sad as it is that he's lost this eye, it will just heal like a cut and there will be a small scar potentially and he'll just look like he's winking. We're done. I'm very happy with how it's gone and I think he'll bounce back really well. Um, we've just got to take extra special care of that remaining eye. Boy. You brave boy. Hello, my darling. How are you feeling today? It's been just side. 24 hours since American Staffy Juice had major surgery to remove his left eye. Come on then. Come on, juice this way. Good boy. After Good a brutal boy. attack with a screwdriver left the 11 month old Christ. critically injured, Juice has made a remarkable recovery. Oh, juice, who's this? But before he can get the all clear to go home, Laura and intern Grace need to give him a final check. Man. Well, he's so much brighter, isn't he? He is. He's been really comfortable. When Juice came in the other night, he was, you know, in shock. He was whimpering. His eye looked absolutely terrible. Oh, how does that feel to have your head back? Today, he is so much happier. He's definitely on the road to recovery, and I can't wait to send him home with Mom and Dad. Can I have a little look, my sweet? Yes. Oh, boy. It looks good. so good. This is all stitched up nicely. Yeah. Well, Juice, yeah. I think that looks great. You know what that means? Do you know what that means? We can go see Mum and Dad. For owners Meg and Todd, it's been a heartbreaking ordeal and they're anxious to see their brave boy. All we've been thinking about is being able to finally come and see him again, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just I don't even care what he looks like. I just want to bring him home. Come on then. Come on. We're going to go see Mum and Dad. Who have we got out here? <gasps> Who's that? <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. <laughs> Words cannot explain how happy I'm feeling right now. As soon as we saw Juice's face, with his tongue just hanging out, oh, it's the best feeling I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> hey, you glad to see Mum and Dad? <laughs> How much better does he look, yeah. hey? You're so happy. So happy. Laura has prescribed massive doses of TLC as Juice recovers with his relieved and doting owners at home. It looks like the operation was done a week ago and it was done yesterday. Like, it's amazing how Such a good job. tidy it is now and... Now it's just keeping it from getting infected and hopefully the hair will grow over it and he'll just have some tough little scars and a permanent wink. Okay, Jews, come on then. Come on. This way. We'll see you later, pal. Thank, Thank you, you so later. much. It's Thank my you pleasure, so much honestly. for everything. Come on, Jews. Come on. Come on, Jews. Home's this way. <laughs> see you later, guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Juice experienced probably one of the most horrific attacks I've ever seen on a dog. And to actually come out of it how he has is brilliant. Yeah, he might have lost an eye, but he's going to go home with Megan Todd and he's going to go on to live a happy, normal life. Go. Good boy. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so cute. Come on, Juice. Today I'm on my way to North London to do something that's really important to me. The rescue charity All Dogs Matter have asked me to come and visit their kennels to check out some new arrivals. Waiting at All Dogs Matter is Ira, who founded the rescue charity. Hey, Ira, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Big day. Like jump suit. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm kitted out, ready to go for a very big day. I yeah, hope our yeah. Korean yeah. dogs have travelled well to the UK. Yeah, it was very exciting, just waiting for them to arrive. Kennels have been especially prepared for 12 very special rescue cases that are arriving all the way from South Korea. So the dogs arriving today have been rescued from a meat farm. They are dogs that are either bred for their meat or they're often stolen or they're ex-pets that have been picked up. They're kept on these farms, fattened up, and then once a year there's the Yulin Meat Festivals when these dogs are basically tortured and killed, and it's horrendous. They're like death camps, really. 
Korean government and lots of, you know, young Koreans are obviously anti this now. They're working at closing most of these farms down and rescuing and taking out most of these dogs. Dogs are complex, emotional, sentient beings, so they understand what's going on around them. So the thought that these poor animals live a life where they're unloved, and when it comes to their final moments, they see what's going to happen to them. It's just, it, it just, you can't, you just can't bear thinking about it. It's awful. These will be the first Korean meat trade dogs to arrive in the UK after being rescued by the charity Humane Society International. So we're looking quite shy, a little bit traumatised. Hello. London-based All Dogs Matter has been entrusted with finding them new homes. To be able to make just even the slightest bit of difference and have a connection that makes them think, you know what, maybe people aren't horrendous, which they must think right now. Hello, buddy. Welcome to Britain. And I hope that these dogs might finally see a good side to people. It's just awful to think this is the first time he's been shown true affection, isn't it? Well, absolutely. I and mean, the trust that they give, considering how they're treated, is just... Well, I think maybe we can learn some lessons from them. Well, let's get you somewhere nice and warm, shall we? We've got a lovely bed set up for you. My job today is to examine them all, make sure that they have survived the journey OK, and then give them their first set of vaccinations. Each dog is taking to its environment differently. While some seem relaxed, others are a lot more fearful. She won't bite. <laughs> Poor Lulu, she's obviously seen a hell of a lot. She's one of the most nervous. Uh, she's petrified. She won't make any eye contact, won't look at you. She just doesn't want to see anything of the world. I mean, just, just wonder what she's seen in her little life. Up it's so now. upsetting to see, isn't it's it? Really, it's more upsetting now I've met them. It's really got to you, hasn't it? Yeah, now I've met them. Yeah. It's very clear the damage that has been done by these dogs being in the environments that they've been in back in Korea. These dogs have had no upbringing, no socialisation, no training, no fun, no joy. And as a result, they just have nothing to give. She's completely broken down. She's just frozen. Lulu is clearly severely traumatised. What's going to be the hard part is teaching this beautiful dog to be a dog again. We do need to take a different approach when trying to examine dogs like this because you simply have no history. And if anything, you know that they're from pretty bad beginnings. So they're going to be nervous, some of them fearful, some of them aggressive as a result of being fearful. So it is a case of just gently moving forward, doing the best for them, but trying to appreciate the traumas they've been through. A little feeling of what freedom feels mm. like, and sweetie. She's so Abby is the first dog Scott will be treating. The funny thing about dealing with Abby is just she's actually quite friendly. Yes, she's timid and she's nervous and she's shy, but she's not aggressive. And you think, you know what, after what they've been through, if they were trying to bite my face off, I'd understand it. But yet she's still got room in her heart for affection, which is just so desperately sweet. <laughs> A little bit unsure of noises. Well, I suppose in her past, those sorts of noises could have meant death. Oh. To think they might have actually seen... Being grabbed out yeah. of the cage. We're sitting here now, so yeah. come in and grab her out. So and kill her kill right her in front of the... the oh, it's just... It's not worth thinking about. Yeah. But sadly, it's a reality and it's happening. Yeah. We just need to stop it happening. Yeah. And for this little girl, she just needs to learn that she can be safe and confident here and no-one's going to do that to you. It is a real privilege today to be the vet for these dogs. OK, Abby, so you're going to be a brave girl. The first vet in the UK to examine them, give them a vaccination and then help them on their way. Hey, that's the first step to your forever home. Yes. I was really gearing myself up for a really difficult job today that these dogs would really make it hard to get these vaccinations in them to start the process of, of a healthy new life. Good girl. Good girl. But most of them, friendly, sweet, just thoroughly gorgeous creatures. So little Mocker here is behaving a little bit more like what you'd expect from I a meat so, dog. I think so, yeah. A Nervous bit more aggressive and, and a little bit of an aggression, yeah. yeah. So I think we're going to have to be careful here. Getting into the cage with Mocker and Jane, you can see that this dog is just quite fearful, quite nervous, and also a little bit reactive. 
And it's those dogs you can't read very well, and sometimes they go from fearful to aggressive. All right. Not stupid. You know exactly what this is, don't you? I mean, he's acting just like you'd expect a dog from a meat farm to behave. He's like, all people are scum, yeah. and I don't trust one single one of you. Hey? Understandably, that type of rope would have been the kind of thing that would have been put around other dogs that he would have seen back in Korea and would have been dragged out to their deaths. So clearly he's going to be worried about that. Good boy. Now, we're really sorry about that. Good okay. Boy. We're not trying to do anything mean to you. No, we're not. No, we're not. Okay, so I'm just checking the fact that Mokra is definitely a boy. And? He is, but he's got a bit of an issue in that he only has one descended testicle. Okay. So he's a crypt orchid, so the other one I can't feel it in the inguinal canal, so it means that that testicle is likely in, still in his abdomen. So okay. when he gets neutered, we'll have to go fishing in there to try and find, and find it. it. Remove it. Good boy. Although I've picked up a condition in Mocha that does need surgery, I just don't feel that his emotional state is strong enough for him to leave the supportive environment of the kennels. So I think it's best I leave him here in the caring and loving arms of Jane, but I will be coming back to pick him up soon. Let's see, we didn't even need the muzzle. Hey? No, we didn't. No. Two weeks later, Scott is returning to the rescue charity All Dogs Matter. Hello, guys. Hello. Good lad. He's back to see Mocha, one of the 12 dogs rescued from the South Korean meat trade. Good lad. Mocha has a condition known as cryptorchidism, where one of his testicles is missing from the scrotum. Hello, Jane. Hi, Scott. This is all looking very promising, isn't it? He's getting used to some pampering. Hello, Mocha. Doing really well. Okay. Well, Jane, you've obviously been sprinkling your magic on this guy because he's quite the transformed <laughs> character, isn't he? Coming on really, really well. Scott predicted it would take intensive TLC to help Mocha come out of his shell. So we've been getting used to handling him, grooming him, getting him ready for his forever home. Okay, and he's at least accepting it now, isn't it? Where Seems so much before, more relaxed. He was quite a nervous chap. I remember us uh, running around <laughs> trying to get hold of him. Exactly, yeah. Um, so it seems to me that he has developed a little bit more confidence since he arrived from Korea. Do you feel like maybe he's ready now to allow me to take him to the practice? I think that'd be great. I think the trust is there and I think he's good to go. Yeah, and we just need to jump this last hurdle before he can go to his forever home. It's got to happen sometime, my friend. Hey, you ready? I think he's ready. Yeah. Jane's an incredible person. She really is like a dog whisperer. She is so good with them. Good lad, is that nice? You see the way she moves with them and works with them. She really does garner their confidence, and clearly that's really worked with Mocha. Now, mate, I'm really sorry to do this, but I um, just want to make sure that what I felt last time in your uh, male areas is the same. All right, so let me just have a little feel. Good boy. So you've got back here. So Good lad. last time I could only feel one testicle in his scrotum, and the same applies today, I'm afraid. So there is just the one ball in the bag. Right. So the oh, other one mocha. is likely to be in his abdomen Okay. still. So he would have been born that way. and. He's classed as a dog with cryptorchidism. Okay. And that is a problem long term because that testicle will develop in a warmer environment, being in the abdomen rather than being in the scrotum. And that could mean he's opened up to, well, basically cancer. Okay. So it's better that we just take it out now that we know it's a problem and then he can start in his new life. So that's good that he's ready to go. Yeah. Good boy. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Okay. There we are, Mocha. All right. Off you go. Go, all right. Good boy. In you go. There we go. Good lad. All right. Right. See you soon. See you soon. See Good ya. luck, Mocha. Come on, beautiful. Let's go and show you off to the girls. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Who's this? This very handsome fellow is Mocha. Oh, wow. Scott has arrived at the St. Margaret's practice with Mocha. The timid little rescue dog is getting a warm welcome from receptionist Liz and vet nurse Jess. He's gorgeous. 
don't you? Looks a bit shy. Yeah, he's still trying to take in everything that's happened to him, I think. He's probably never been in a room with, you know, white walls and people that smile and mm. <laughs> things that we just take for granted, so. Mm. He's just going to be nervous about life, aren't you, for a while? But you're a lovely boy, aren't you? <laughs> Bobby's like, yeah, that's what I think of people that are in the meat trade. <laughs> yes, come on then. All right, come on. Let's leave you up here, puppy. <laughs> Jess, you're with me. See you later. We don't know if Mocker's going to be fear aggressive. We've only seen him for today, so we have to gauge his behavior. There we go, Auntie Jess has got you. Good boy. Bad. Okay, thank just you. Gonna hold okay, this, this is a very it? funny noise. We'll start it over here. Good boy. Right. He's a great just taking it a bit more slow and being more patient with him, because you can see in his eyes, he's just not sure about us yet. OK, so I'll just give you a little bit of this to make you feel a bit sleepy, yeah? It's strange, isn't it, that we get so many dogs and puppies that come in that have been socialised and been around families and people mm. that aren't even half as well behaved as, yeah. as he is. Much more of a handful. Yeah, you're incredible, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, we've been working and existing alongside dogs for thousands of years, so there's something in that. There's almost a genetic memory for us to get on with dogs and for dogs to get on with us. And he's just tapping into that, forgetting what he's seen before and appreciating what he's got now. Mocker is now fully sedated, and Scott can proceed with the operation. It doesn't take a bit to see that there is only one testicle in that scrotum, and that is clearly incorrect. So what we need to work out is where's the best spot to go fishing? And we can work that out by just pushing this testicle upwards, and we can see when you push it upwards, you can see actually that is the testicle from his right. So therefore, the other testicle should be to his left. So that's my fishing spot right there. It's really important that we find this testicle because it is a bit of a ticking time bomb. When the testicle develops, it goes outside the body and into the scrotum, and it functions at two degrees below body temperature. When it's inside the body, it's two degrees above what it should be. That can then stimulate mutation, and the main mutation is unfortunately cancer. OK, so everyone ready? Everyone happy? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. OK. First things first, I'm just going to cut through the abdominal wall just to be able to gain access to the abdominal cavity, and then going to go fishing. So it's kind of like an ice fisherman, so they have to cut the hole in the ice first, and then they uh, pop the line in and see what they can catch. So I'm basically just fishing around just to sort of see what I can feel. And I feel something testicle-esque, and I'm going to try and grab hold of it. Yes. There you are, you little spider. Here we go, Reagan. Look at this. Look. Yeah, caught one. Oh, yeah. Look at that. There it is. It's quite small, actually. Yeah. So it's just developed exactly where it shouldn't have. So as a result, it's just a bit abnormal. But left to its own devices, abnormality can turn into lots of nasty things, including cancer. So it's definitely a case of better out than in. Yeah. Good catch. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that's done. Nice and neat. In and out. Never knew I was there, like a burglar. Now, I can remove the easy one. So there we go. You can see the difference then, right? Yeah. So that's a normal testicle. All right, so that's that. All done. Cool. Castration completed. Our boy can wake up. Cool. Come on then, boy. Let's pop you back to bed. Oh, he's a good boy. Come on then. Come on. Good boy. Here we go. Let's pop you in here. Mocker will sleep off his sedation before being returned to the charity All Dogs Matter, and the search can begin for his new family. Okay, all right. You sleep that off. Fishing's exhausting, isn't it? In South London, Mocha is enjoying a brand new life. How are you doing? Mocha's new owner, Mina, is also originally from South Korea and feels strongly about the abuse of dogs in her home country. I always felt very bad about um, 
my culture and people eating dog meat. I always <laughs> wanted to rescue dogs from dog meat farm, and that's why we adopted Mocha. Good boy. Good boy. Mina's other rescue dog, Ellie, has been an ideal playmate for shy Mocha. Have I? Ellie is a very affectionate dog, so if we sit on the couch, Ellie will come and Mocha will just copy her and he'll come and ask for pets. So Ellie is just Mocha's uh, model. <laughs> Sit. But Mocha is still painfully timid and will need a lot more time to learn to socialize. Mocha was just too scared about everything. And if you put on the lead and he thinks like, oh, I'm going to do something on him, he would just sit on the floor and wouldn't move and just so scared. And so we tried to walk both of the dog together and then he was just completely okay on the lead. So we were so surprised. Wow, that's how, how he trusts dogs, but not humans. Mocha was deeply traumatized when Scott first saw him, so he's keen to check up on his progress. That's it. Hi there, Mina. Hi, Scott. How are you? Good, how are you? Very good. I like the way you're making happy little families yes. here. Yes, mm hmm They're both getting on so nicely. So who is this? This is Ellie. Hello, Ellie. Hello, gorgeous. How are you? And of and course, this? Mocha. Yeah, hi, Mocha. Hello, beautiful. Walking up to Mina, I get to see the beautiful Mocha looking like a completely transformed character. There he is on a lead in a park in the middle of London with a little canine companion and a loving new owner. It's wonderful. Can you say hi to me? Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Oh, thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> hey, sit. <gasps> Wow, so already got some basic <laughs> yeah. training down, Mina. Yeah, well done. You can ask for kisses too. <laughs> oh, I'd love to. Can I have kisses? Kisses? Oh. oh, thank you. Even if you have to buy it, it's still yeah. lovely. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I think Mocha remembers Scott and it looks like he's happy to see Scott again and he gives like a bunch of kisses. <laughs> so yeah. still a bit nervous of people, mm -hmm. which is completely understandable. I yeah. mean, where he came from, he had no trust or faith in the people around mm -hmm. him. So it's a, a whole process of relearning that people actually are quite yeah. nice. One of the things that Mina's concerned about is that Mocha really doesn't like people, particularly men, which is not a surprise considering where he's come from. So she just needs to continue to socialise him well, go out and about, meet lots of lovely dog owners, and hopefully soon he'll realise that not all people are bad. Yeah. But he's completely trust me right now, so every time he's scared about other strangers who just come and sit right next to me and he just thinks that I can protect him. <laughs> oh, Mocha really couldn't be in a more perfect environment to be yeah. with a countrywoman, <laughs> with another dog that yeah. we know that he loves and mm -hmm. all he wants is love, affection and attention and it yeah. sounds like that's what he's going to get with you. It's been only one month but I see like huge improvement on Mocha. Kisses. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good boy. Good boy. And thank you so much for taking care of him. I really appreciate it. I do. Oh, yeah. thank you. Well, I'm just so glad that I've been able to play a, a part and now that he is uh, in a happy family. Mm -hmm. I have massive respect for Mina and absolutely everyone who's been involved with rescuing Mocha all the way through to him having a loving new home. All those people are really fighting a great fight to try and end the cruel trade, which is the dog meat trade. Let's hope that it's over very soon. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love you too. Yes. Apparently, someone has put their cat into a cat cage and thrown it into Bondi, so into the water. It's Saturday night and Chris is responding to an emergency call. Someone's pulled the cat out, police have taken it to the clinic. Uh, they're waiting there now, they need to talk to me, but we need to sort this cat out. Hello, how are you going? Vet students Callie and Jermaine live above the clinic and are always on call. It was completely drenched from head to toe and um, its mucous membranes, so like under its lip, is um, bright blue. This cat had no chance if, if the people that were standing there didn't intervene and actually rescue the cat. 
water tonight would have been quite cold, so the problem we've got right now is the fact that it's, it, we're battling hypothermia uh, and just getting its temperature. We're now on 32.7, 32.8 degrees, when normal is, is a, around 38 to, to 39 degrees, so we're dramatically low, um, and, and that's the biggest issue. We need to get direct access into its circulation to deliver some drugs, because right now shock could kill his cat. It's, it's strange just to keep on calling it a cat, but we still don't have a name for it. The, the information we received was that we, we've arrested one person, um, the person that was arrested and had indicated that it was her animal, was her cat, and that she was taking it down to safe and will it. So it sounds like it's a, bit, it's a deliberate act. Yeah, OK. No one knows just how long this poor cat was struggling to survive in the Bondi surf. Make no mistake, this cat's actually been in the water and been in deep, which is remarkable. and. and horrendous at the same time. Infection, pneumonia, immediate dangers. It's in a very bad way. It's, its lungs are full of fluid. All I'm hearing right now are crackles because there's, there's so much fluid in those, those airways in its lungs. Um, it's battling to try and get air in, but also it's battling shock. And, and understandably too, it's been through absolute hell tonight. Now the cat won't like this, but it is for its own good. We're just trying to loosen up the fluid from those airways and using gravity to try and force the fluid out of its lungs. We've now got our first bit of good news. The temperature's now come up to 33.7. So it is climbing. It's still too early to say that it's actually gonna recover, but this is a good sign right now. From what the police have said, the owner of this cat was putting it out of its misery, was, was giving it a, what they called a good death. Now, to me, the cat looks okay. It's just one of those ones you just stand back and just shake your head at. The cat needs rest to overcome the shock. Might grab a stethoscope. But when he's moved to the treatment room, he takes a turn for the worse. Just since we've moved it, the, the cat has, has actually gone downhill a little bit, which, which is a concern. Now, what I'm actually gonna do is transfer him to x-ray and just see if we can get a picture of his lungs and just see how much, how much fluid's sitting in there. Right now, I'd say around 60 to 70% of his lung is actually functioning. This bit of lung is what's keeping him alive. If he was under for any longer, and it may just be a matter of seconds, probably one more breath, one more intake of that salt water would have filled up this area of lung with seawater and, and he'd be dead right now. The cat's now in one hell of a fight for its life. Oh, hello. Hello, buddy. Gee, looks good. Looks a lot better. Hey, mate. How are you going? It was one hell of a night, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Last night, he was probably around 60% capacity in terms of the area of his lung that was actually working. Remember this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now he's nudging around 90%, I'd say, just listening to his chest. The lungs sound clear. There's none of those awful crackles that we had last night. I've decided he doesn't. Mm -hmm. hey, Chris and Sarah are trying to tempt the miserable Moggy with some chicken. It's hot chicken too. Let's, let's not underestimate yeah. the effort we've gone to here. <laughs> it's the real deal, mate. It's He's understandably yeah, suspicious of, of the entire human race. You. you ever heard of anything like this before? No. No, nothing like this. It's quite horrifying, actually. It's, you know, it's going to take time, and you can see why. Mm. You poor thing. He's so pretty. Yeah, he's a nice cat. Beautiful face. Big fat face. Yeah. Yeah. When he first came in, understandably, he was absolutely beside himself. Uh, he was very scared. He didn't trust any people. We couldn't get near him, in fact. Okay. There we go. Good job. Oh, Off we go. It's just a horrible thing to think of that someone actually would thro throw a cat in the water in its cage um, at Bondi Beach. It's just um, horrendous. Hopefully we'll be able to get him a nice new home. Oh, there you are. There we go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I take that as the sound that he just doesn't want to leave us. No, he doesn't. We've bonded, haven't we, buddy? Huh? A week later and the cat that was dumped in the Bondi surf is still not showing <laughs> any gratitude. We can't send him home without a name. What about Huey? Short for Houdini. Oh, definitely. No, Houdini. It's, it's who does not. Sort of. You're going to be Houdini? Houdini had the great underwater escape trick, didn't he? <laughs> I did too. He's a real character and he deserves a great home and 
by the looks of his foster care, he's certainly going to be getting that. Yeah. Julie met Huey. <laughs> Here you go, little buddy. He's beautiful. He's great. I'm in love with him. Already? Yes, look at him, he's already... He's already snuggling too. He's such a beautiful boy. I think he needs a bit of time to settle. I think he's been tortured and traumatised. Uh, but I think he's going to make a beautiful, loving cat. It's time to go, little buddy. <laughs> In fact, go now. <laughs> this is goodbye. <laughs> this is goodbye. I'll miss him. See you later then. <laughs> <laughs>
so yeah, they're quite long. Very aren't they? pale legs. These birds shoved into spaces that are too small with no natural light. There you go, sweetheart. <laughs> their feet are on wire their entire lives. They're dumped at 72 weeks because they're not laying as much as they need to lay. You know, they're just effectively a living machine. That doesn't sit comfortably with me. Hey. Ellie, do you love this one? I think this one's your first chicken. Bless her. Hey. <laughs> Ellie's definitely got her eye on this one. It's because uh, Ellie's had her first chicken cuddle and she's smitten. Hello, sweetheart. I just want to give him a good home, really. Yeah. OK, so she can go down. Once we've examined all the birds and they all seem to be in pretty good nick, Ali and I get to choose chickens, which is very exciting indeed. <laughs> Lovely. Well it's like my rocky moment. I've got you, I've got you. You're that definitely going home well with me after that. <laughs> this one's very talkative. I think she'll suit my household very well. Oh, it's a girl. It's three. Three more. So these girls don't really know how lucky they are. As soon as they get home, they'll be sunbathing for the first time, standing on grass for the first time, laying their first freedom egg, which is amazing. So they've got just a whole free range retirement ahead of them, and they're going to be really, really happy. Hello. You're home. Scott is dropping off Ali and her hens first. I'm hoping they'll settle in pretty quickly. Yeah. Right, sweet. Say hi to mummy. Hello, me. I want them to have a very different life. I want them to have fresh air and the sunlight and freedom and the best food you can give them, all the stuff they're going to love. Welcome to your new home. Some more females enter the ranks of the Miller household. They come to welcome the girls. Come on, then. And now, Scott can introduce his new arrivals to their brand new home. Come on, OK. I'm really chuffed at the whole process, actually, and to finally have the girls here and to know that they're safe and happy and well, it's, it's such a wonderful feeling. Look, sunshine and a tree. I know those furry things down there are dogs. And you're going to meet a few more people soon. Hey, Come on, then. In you go. You guys have a nice little rest. A few more important people for you to meet. Yeah? Look! Who do you think is going to be in here, JJ? Look. Yes. Do you want to meet them? Look. The new arrivals are settling in well, and Scott is excited to introduce them to the family. Cute. They are very cute, aren't they? Mate? Very cute. I've already called that one. That one's Eggy. That one there. Eggy. That's Eggy there. Okay. okay. Yep. And then the dark the one there. That's Chuck Norris there. Chucky, Daddy, look. Oh Did wow, you? one's gone out. Yay! That's Hey Hey. It's always special to rescue animals, but to know that they wouldn't have been alive if it wasn't for us taking them to our new homes is just such a wonderful feeling. Hi, Pasta. That's Pasta. Oh, hi, Pasta boy. It's a girl. Oh, hi, Pasta girl. Yeah. <laughs> they need to be girls to lay eggs. If they were boys, they'd wake you up at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's true. That, like you <laughs> do. <laughs> just introduced the chickens to the kids and they think they're wonderful and they're so excited for them to be here. It's just such a lovely additive to the family and also the end of the journey to have the girls here and to have them comfortable and happy and they're already eating and pecking around. It's a really good result, so I'm ecstatic. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Kate. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content. And if you love Bondi Vet, go and support us by checking out Bondi Pet Marketplace at bondipet.com. You'll find a whole range of great Aussie pet products and services. We can't wait to see you there.